everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, I'm Emily. I love macrame, thrifting, and of course, a good DIY project. Today, I have your long overdue macra weave tutorial. So this is a combination of macrame and weaving, and you guys have asked me how I do it. So it's finally here. Before I jump into anything, if you guys aren't already, feel free to follow me on Instagram at emilyfaith22. Let's not waste any more time and let's get into this thing. There's, there's so much to say about macroweave and I guess just everything. So in some ways this will be a more in-depth tutorial. But if you haven't, you do need to go watch my three basic macrame knot tutorial. That's gonna give you guys the basics because I'm gonna be teaching you guys some other new things. I'm not gonna go over that stuff, so I'll link that video down below for you. Another thing you guys always ask me is, what macrame cord do I use? There are so many options out there. You guys can just Google macrame cord and see what comes up. If there's anything near you, you can check on Amazon. I can link some Amazon stuff below. For today's project, I am going to be using this giant spool. I got this in bulk. You guys would not need to buy this much and I won't be using all of this. And this is from ropeshop.ca. I can link that one down below if you guys wanna check it out. You can buy it in smaller amounts. You don't have to buy it that big. And that's a five millimeter, which is a little fat. The next thing you guys need to know is that you're gonna need some sort of wooden dowel or a stick. In the past, I have used something like this. This is just some driftwood, but I didn't wanna go with that sort of look today, so I went with a wooden dowel. Lately, I've had quite a few people asking me what size my wooden dowel is, and honestly, I don't, I don't know. Like, is that like an inch? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, it's the size of my thumb, pretty much. You definitely don't pick one that's like wobbly. This one's like really sturdy, so if one is like super skinny, you'll know, because it'll be wobbly. So anyways, just pick out, it can be whatever size you want, thicker, just maybe not super, super thin. And I didn't measure, but my guess would be that that wooden dowel is probably just shy of two feet or maybe right around two feet long. I think we're ready to begin the fun part. <laughs> you guys are going to cut 18 strings and they're each going to be right around 11 feet. Then you're going to fold them in half and loop them on to the wooden dowel. This is just a clothing rack for anyone wondering and I just have these hooks. If you don't have that, you can just tie a string to it and like tack it to the wall or something like that. For this project, you are also going to need some yarn. <laughs> now I have used some of this yarn so that's why it's in baggies. This one I got off of Amazon and it was way too expensive. <laughs> And I didn't even know that you could get them from Michaels. So I actually love this one. Like it's this beautiful kind of uh, creamy tan color. So I can link this below, but it was definitely expensive. I got it months and months ago and I never used it. But you can buy ones like this from Michaels and you can use a coupon. So this is definitely more affordable. So you guys should probably just check out Michaels for some like really fat, chunky yarn. And then of course, at Michaels, you can also just get some like fatter stuff like this. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, but we'll find out at the end. <laughs> I think we're finally actually truly ready to begin making some knots. I'm going to be taking this other cord I have. This is totally unnecessary. You guys can use the cord, like you guys just use the same cord, but I'm going to be using this cord because it's a thinner cord. Again, this is totally unnecessary. I'm just choosing to do this. What I'm going to do is take your cord and we are going to tie a double half hitch knot straight across. We're going to make a line. Instead of using this cord, which I've done in some past videos, and you can do this, but you basically take your cord and pull it to the side and tie a double half hitch. Instead of doing that, I'm going to basically add a full separate cord. The reason I'm choosing to do this, just using a separate cord altogether, is because it eliminates the problem later on of having a few cords to be really, really short, and I hate running into that problem. So we're going to add in a cord, and I will show you guys how to hide it at the back when we're done. Once 
once you have your full line straight here of the double half hitch, we do have this extra string hanging over because obviously we added in this piece of string. So how we hide that at the back is you are going to need some tape. <laughs> Mine's clearly almost gone. And I like to tape off my ends. I wrapped some tape around it. I choose this one because it's obviously the same color, but you can use washi tape or whatever. And then I'm going to cut it. So I've gone ahead and flipped my wooden dowel over to the back. So this is what it looks like from the back. And I have taped both sides and cut them short. So what you're going to do, actually this is pretty short. You guys might wanna leave them a little longer. I didn't even really look. <laughs> what you're going to do is skip over this first little loop, but go to the second one and we're going to tuck it under. The same thing on this side. You skip this, but we're going to tuck it under this one. That's what it will look like. It's looped at the back, just like that, right through. When you flip it back around, it should look like this. Your strings are hidden at the back. We're going to do some square knots right up at the top. You guys should know how to do your square knots if you're watching this video. So let's get going with those. I do wanna do three rows of square knots and to do another row, you guys know that we leave out the two strings on the end and combine our groupings of square knots and then we are gonna go ahead and do a third row. Now that we have our three lines of square knots, what we're going to do, and I don't wanna be confusing, but there really isn't an exact science to this, and we're going to kind of create a curved wavy line. And so what I'm going to do with a few of my square knots, I think I'm gonna make some of them longer. They'll arch up and then go down, so then these ones are longer. All I ended up doing, I added these square knots and these two right here. And again, it doesn't need to be an exact science. We're just kind of gonna create a curved line. Let's grab another spare piece of cord and we are going to create another line of our double half hitch. Just like we did up top, only this time, we are going to curve it to the shape of our square knots. So it's going to be a curved line. we have our wavy line I hope that made sense and if you guys want you can skip the part where you make it wavy it's totally fine to have a straight across line it'll still work perfectly so if you guys are like this wavy thing is so confusing don't do it just keep it straight across line with the three rows of square knots and it'll totally <laughs> for now. I do need to go and tuck in my cord so I'm not going to show you guys that again because it's the same process every time. Next what I'm going to do is add another row of double half hitch and leave these empty because once we complete our full macrame design is when we go back and add in our weaving. I just added this second line and I tried to curve it almost so like it was a mirror image to this one. I'm just going to tuck these at the back. Now I'm going to add another string and I'm just gonna pick a spot, maybe just making sure that I could still do groupings of four. So here we go, we'll pick right here. And we're just going to kind of do a little curve like this. Now that we've finished this little thing, we do tuck in our strings. So it just tucks in right to that second one, just as if it was on the end. That'll tuck right back there, and the same on the end. Now what I'm going to do is do some more square knots, but I'm gonna start them over here and kind of, 
I'm not sure, but kind of do them like across like this. So I guess we'll just watch together. We're going to do another line of the double half hitch. This one's a little bit more straight across. Going to add another sort of line across. Again, I might create a little bit of imperfection in it to kind of mirror this one. Just finished up that next line. And what we're gonna do is make one tiny little kind of slit peekaboo, kind of like this one, but right here, just a little one. And then we're gonna do square knots and one final straight line. So when you do the little when you do the little slits, make sure that you work in the groupings of four so that it doesn't get messed up over here. So I'm just taking two groupings of four and starting on this side with my double half hitch. This is what the bottom looks like. You can see I've only tied like half a square knot here. Um, I guess I could tie one here. It's a little bit going up. I was trying to get as straight of a line as possible. Now that we have fully finished our macrame design, all I need to do, and I'll wait till the end, is cut off the bottom. This is the part where we begin weaving. Now, I just wanted to preface this with a few things. I really don't know much about weaving at all. I don't know the name of any sort of like knots or the ways people tie stuff. Like I don't know. You guys could go look up your own sort of weaving tutorials because all we're going to do is use these lines as if they were a loom with the threads going up and down. So anywhere where there's a gap like this, we can weave in between. So that's why I said earlier that it doesn't matter if it's curvy or straight across, you could have just done nice straight across lines and it would be the same. You can weave anywhere where you have gaps like this. What we're gonna start with is this big bundle of yarn that I got on Amazon. But again, Michael's is probably gonna be your best bet, but I can link this down below. And what I like to do is cut off a good amount, but you do need to like cut off a chunk. <laughs> so I'm like, this is what I got. And what I did was tape my ends because this stuff is super, super fragile. So if you pull it too hard, it rips, all that. So I like to tape my ends. Um, it's just easier to work with that way. So we're gonna start up here. And this one kind of looks like a braid. So we're just gonna call it like a braid weaving. And I'm sure people are gonna comment below what it's actually called and that's good. First thing we do, we're gonna work with groups of two, is put an end piece through, put it down to the side like this, down to the side. Then we loop this over the top and we're gonna take our next two strings and loop this entire bundle behind and through it. Okay, so did you guys see that? We pulled that whole bundle through there and then it looks like that. So we wrapped it around that second one, pulled it through, and now we just keep going. So you loop, so now you take the next two, loop it behind, and then we're going to slowly feed it through. Okay, and then it will start to get to the end and 
it'll look like this where it's going that way. You just loop it to the other side. So it's starting to look like that. And then we take our next two strings behind. Pull it this way. There you go. Once you've pulled it all the way, you cross it over. Take your next two. Once you get to the end, we have our two strings left. We do our last one the same. Tuck it behind, pull it through. So, and it would look just like that, going that way. So what I do, because we're gonna go back the other way, and actually I'm not sure I do this part right, but you know, <laughs> I make it work. I go like that. So I just tucked it behind and through, and then you start going the opposite way. So you tuck it behind that side. And you can see that some of my stuff came apart just from pulling through because it is so fragile. And tuck it behind. Apparently I got really lucky this time and measured my yarn like perfectly and I actually didn't measure I just I, I don't know how to measure that much so what happens if you run out is all you do is add more and I tape it and then I kind of like put it up the back and then just pull the new pieces through so that might happen to me later and I can show you guys then but to finish this off we are going to tuck it behind the last one and down through. I barely had enough, but I think I can make it work. And then this one, I'm also gonna put it at the back. So what we do is you can see right here is the one. And I just like to take a piece of tape and you can literally like pick one of these things, maybe right here and like tuck it into it. I guess I don't need this piece of tape. So I tuck it behind it. So there's one and here's that end piece. I might bring it up here and tuck it behind this one or something. And then it's all secured. Well, that is what it looks like and you can see it definitely kind of looks like a braid. I think what I'm going to do is take this yarn that I have. It's more of like a normal size yarn except it's a little thicker still so it's not as thin as some we'll start with this much what I'm gonna do is fill in this area we're not gonna be using the same technique this technique is much easier okay so I taped off my ends and now all you do you know what I might start on this side because it's gonna be a little easier you basically weave in and out like simply like that so this is like a very typical like back and forth, back and forth, if that makes sense. And I do pull all the way through as I go, otherwise it gets harder and harder to pull the string through. Just go back and forth, back and forth, and we'll probably go up at this top part one time and then we'll skip it at the back the next time. And then what I like to do is slightly pull everything out a little bit and we just weave our way back and like this area is really basically full already so if we want I can just come in the next spot that it's not full like that it needs it because right there is fine so I kind of can start right here if that makes sense and now you're gonna go opposite so I went behind this string or I went behind this string now when I poked it through, I'm going to go over that string and 
pulling it through. There's multiple ways to do this. One way that I kind of do sometimes is like take a section like this and just weave this section fully and then I'll skip over and weave this section, this section full. Okay, now that I filled up this spot, what I'm gonna do is just put it behind and not weave until I poke through right here. And then I can just, and that's okay, there'll just be a, like a tighter string at the back. And then you can just, oh wait. So poke through right here. So just make sure that wherever you poke through, it's like the opposite way of whatever was done last. So I finished and you can see I just have these spare pieces. So I am just gonna kind of weave them in here. This is that loose string I was talking about earlier. But yeah, so you just kind of tuck them behind stuff, hide it, I could even hide it down here. Here is what the top looks like all finished. Thought about putting this one right here. I went in and added this chunky yarn with the same sort of knot I did up there. It just looks a little different because it was such a little skinny spot. And I need to tuck that in at the back. What I'm going to do now is in this whole section, I'm going to add little fringe like this. I've cut a whole little handful of these cords and I don't know, they're like a few inches. They don't need to be long. <clears throat> to create these little tassels, what you do is you take two of the strings, you put it in front, loop it behind to the back, and pull and pull the string, the two strings through the middle. Just like that. And I'll cut them later and also fray them. I'll show you again. Them in front of the two strings, and then loop them behind, behind, and then pull the two strings through. Just like that. For the next layer, I'm gonna alternate the two strings just so that I don't get the gaps the whole way up. I did a few layers alternating the strings every time and now I'm just going to fill in this part with that cream yarn that I used up here. To finish off, I am going to take this string, which is the one I used up here and here, and fill in this entire section. I just wanted to keep it minimal since I have like this going on, this going on, and this going on. I thought I'd just keep that section pretty minimal. You guys can see right here, I ran out of cord. All you do if this happens is get some more cord. We're going to tape them together. So I've taped it. We're when it's hanging at the back like this, we're going to keep weaving through, but we don't pull it tight. We make sure that there's this extra piece hanging right here. To finish off, we are going to tape a straight line and then cut right across and then fray our edges. I decided to create a slight V so we're gonna try cutting it. I just wanted to show you guys what the back looks like. So I have like a piece tucked in here. I have a knot tied here. <laughs> Got this string, which I don't have to leave like that, but it doesn't bother me. I guess I could like cut it, cut it and tuck it, but it's fine. <laughs> I have some pieces hidden here. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I have that tucked in, that tucked in. So that's what it looks like if anybody's wondering. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. As always, you guys can subscribe. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> For more of my everyday life, feel free to follow me on Instagram at emilyfaith22. <gasps> I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.